and I think we're yes, we're live. Hello, hello. Uh, you're watching Tech Radar. I'm Basil, and I'm John, <laughs> and we're talking about um, Google Home and Amazon Echo products, largely because these are the two most categorically discounted lines on Black Friday, which starts tomorrow, but it's really already started. Oh yeah, like Amazon's been doing stuff all week and it's yeah. just a sales crazy bonanza nonsense all yeah. the time, all sales. Exactly, it's just consume, consume, awful. consume. Uh, it's basically starting earlier and earlier every year. And it's actually a really good thing in the sense that Google Home and Amazon Echo products are the ones that you can always have more than one of in your house. So a lot of people who already have it are keeping their eyes out. But a lot of people who haven't invested in the smart home are probably wondering which one's right for me yeah and we know that in the comments there are already people who have very very firm opinions on this i'm looking at you british unknown um, <laughs> people with strong opinions on the internet of I all places. Know, right? <laughs> um but they do and actually in this instance it's appropriate because they are very very similar very very different products yeah and it isn't going to be a one size fits all no, no, I think like both of them have different strengths and weaknesses. And I think kind of from our discussions before this, like neither of them are perfect. No. Um, so I don't think either of them like does everything. But, but of, one is better than the other. Uh, yeah, which of, of course is the Amazon Echo. No, no, right? no, no, no. It's a Google Home, obviously. Okay, so I think you might have probably established what we're going to be doing in this video. So I'm much more of a fan of Alexa and the Amazon Echo. And I'm right. Devices. Because and I prefer the home, and home is a more like polished solution, and it feels just less like a hack job. Uh, yeah, but I think we find that the Echo hardware is a lot. Not anyway. We're getting into this okay. way too early. We are. We are. First off, before we jump into the nuts and bolts of me being right, uh, you should check out techradar.com forward slash Black Friday. That's where you'll be able to see all the up to the minute Black Friday dates. If you're in the US as well, there are also going to be some uh, Echo and uh, Home products that are discounted on a refurb basis it's less cut and dry than in the UK which is quite interesting like in the UK Amazon and Google both at the beginning of the week just went outright and said we're gonna discount these products really aggressively yeah. and they're fighting tooth and nail with each other whereas in the US home isn't discounted really no no it's a really strange one so you're gonna have to go into Amazon to find echo uh, discounts and specifically they're around refurbished products a lot of them as first generation as opposed to second generation so we've right. kind of got it good in the UK on this front and that brings us on to why the Google Home is better first and foremost, and that is design. Okay, do, do, do you want to do you want to outline <laughs> okay. your incorrect opinions? So, uh, first off, uh, the Echo Dot um, is a lovely little air freshener kind of like lozenge looking thing that looks like it wouldn't be out of place in the public bathroom right it's shiny reflective plastic and has a matte finish at the top it looks quite industrial yep. and just generally inelegant kind of like a pointless tub um okay whereas the google home mini by contrast has a fabric finish it's more like rounded and organic in its shape and comes in a couple of flavors rather than just black and white you can also get the coral ones so it adds a little bit of fun to the function and even the color popping on the base adds a bit of fun factor i i think i definitely agree that the first generation of most devices it's you know that google has the nicer looking first gen okay. but i think with the kind of with the newer like amazon echo that we saw released this year which is the kind of uh, in the uk it's about 70 pounds or so yep. uh so, so that kind of like that middle range one i think that looks a lot, a lot nicer it comes in those like metal finishes fabric finishes i think that's a really nice looking device um the echo dot i agree is it's not a looker um but i think the thing i really like across the entirety of, of the echo range is it's got that lovely kind of unified blue ring uh, aesthetic to it that I think you kind of you 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 know you, you say Alexa it lights up then it kind of does that thing where like it like illuminates on the side of the ring yeah. that's like that where it's hearing you from I think that's like a really nice intuitive thing to do and then when it's muted it's kind of nice and red and it's really obvious when it's muted yeah. so I think that yes when it's off it's an ugly piece of plastic okay but I think in terms of usability I far prefer that lovely light ring to like the Google Home's kind of spinning like wishy-washy like lights on the top yeah. I just think that's it's harder to read and it's less of a statement yeah I'd say the, the Google Home one was less of a statement in a good way as well like the mm. Google Home Mini for example has four dots at the top whereas the Google Home has a dot ring mm. so they are different so I'll give you that they're a lot less unified across mm. both but the Google Home one has the four colors for the home dots and yeah. it's a little bit of fun and generally speaking with regards to the google home regular um that looks a bit random it does look like a kind of 
off the top cut air freshener you don't, an yeah, exactly. it's, it's an air freshener it's, it is it's, an air freshener yeah. um, and it's less versatile yep. because you don't have that uh, kind of really variety of the Google of the Alexa Echo Dot you've got it in wood you've mm. got it in fabric um, I think me saying Google Loads has actually just fired up my Pixel Buds if you've got any questions on the Pixel Buds save them till later um, but yeah so generally I think that the Google Home range is with the fabric consistency a little bit just better yeah i i think with all of these things the ideal is to have it kind of become invisible in your home a little yes. bit um so i kind of have uh, an echo dot at home and it's kind of plugged in like to the side like i wouldn't i'd love to put it behind my stereo but i think it wouldn't hear me so i kind of got it to the side and it it's kind of just it's nice and anonymous and it's like yeah. you, i don't really need to see it that much so you don't want to see the, it the voice because yeah. it's less attractive yeah. <laughs> okay so we, we basically um i i think i'm right on this one but i do get john's point massively in terms of the intuitiveness of the light system the fact that it can tell you which way it's listening to you yeah. and that actually is a huge reflection of how much better it is at listening than the google home which we will come on to shortly um how good it is at picking up your voice yeah. um but in terms of the design you have to go second generation with the echoes i think we agree yes. in order to get a remotely polished experience whereas google kind of generally hits design quite well mm. um let's get on to your questions now we've got quite a few in there so J jatin says alexa is dumb good to know it didn't give us a reason oh but on that point, uh, so Sony recently launched their own smart speaker, which yep. uses Google Assistant. So I went along to a product demonstration. They conducted a survey, which was the percentage of questions that both Alexa and Google got correct. And they found that, uh, that our commenter is completely correct and that Google was able to answer more of those questions correctly ah. first time. So but then Sony turned around and said, well, it's the more intelligent smart speaker, a smart uh, voice assistant. Yep. So that's the one we're going to build into our smart speaker. So there's there's data to back up. There's the data to back up. Google is cleverer. <laughs> okay, um, maybe you should be sitting on this side of the couch. I just <laughs> understand. Um, okay, so we've got the British unknown. Hey, British unknown. Um, so sorry we were two minutes late today, British unknown. <laughs> uh, but we're glad you were here. Sumit, hello everyone. Hello, Sumit Anderson. Hello, um, Alexa for the win. That's from Warwick Congrave. Karuba Shankar, Google Home for the win. Um, which do you think has a better future, Amazon or Google? And that's from Anderson. And that's actually going to be the very last point that we're going to touch on, the future of these two products. British Unknown um, is explaining what this live stream is about to everyone in the chat room. Thank you. You are wonderful. The Thanks air so freshener much. look was deliberate, so it didn't stand out in existing homes. Fair. Yeah, I, I suppose it's tricky because like with any speaker, you can never tuck that away in a corner because it will ultimately start like reflecting off walls and stuff. And you kind of want to be able to put it front and center. But it kind of depends on what your home looks yeah, like. And kind yeah. of Google did that thing where they, you had the replacement like bottoms and stuff. So it, they kind of went like, oh, whatever the color scheme of your home, you can replace that. And like, I see that. But the top is always going to be that like plain yeah, white. Plain I white. Think that's not going to suit every interior decor. Yeah, I, I'm lucky. It does really go in my kitchen well. And yeah. the fabric gray base gray is such a neutral color yeah. and it's a speckled gray so it just is absolutely fine um whereas i just find that the alexa i'm sorry the echo dot is a little bit more kind of just stark and yeah. almost like it just has this really really almost pharmaceutical like yeah yeah, it's like I want to squeeze it and it'll dispense soap into my hand. Yeah, yeah, it looks like um, the kind of thing you'd plug into your TV in the 90s. Yeah. It's, it's like a real kind of utilitarian yeah, appliance. Yeah. But it does hear you. And that brings us on to the next point, yeah. which is where I'm going to just throw my hands up yeah. and say, I lose this round because the Google Home, not the Mini, the Mini yeah. actually weirdly has better uh, microphones than the Google Home. Mm. The Google Home regular really struggles to pick up what I say a lot of the time, yeah. whereas my teeny tiny Echo Dot gets it at probably around double as Often. Yeah, so I mean, uh, for, for for those that aren't, aren't familiar, the uh, all the Echo devices have, I think it's a seven microphone array. So they have like a lot of microphones in the top there, and they kind of they're all like arranged in a circle. The idea being that whatever direction you're talking to it from, it can kind of work that. So hence the kind of the light ring. Yeah, the light will actually illuminate in the direction that you're speaking to yeah. it from. So then effectively what that means is you can just be sure that it's going to hear you like more of the time. So when I was using an Echo Dot, I'd frequently go, Alexa, what's the time? Without yeah. like a pause between Alexa and the command because you're just certain that it's going to hear you. Um, whereas with Google Home, I'd kind of go, okay, Google, wait for it to like light up and then give my command because so often it wouldn't hear yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and then I think 
so I've been using the Sonos One speaker uh, recently, which is uh, the Sonos's speaker that has Alexa built in. Yeah. That's got just one, two or one microphones in the top, and I have the same problem with that as I as do with the do Google, Google Home. Home. It's just okay. you need that like larger amount of microphones. You need that far field like noise cancellation technology for it to be able to hear you. Um, so I don't think it's anything that's like intrinsic to the to the voice assistant. Yeah. I think yeah. it's just the hardware. You just need to like invest in good microphones, and yeah. there needs to be a lot of them. Um, Interestingly, I don't know why the Google Home Mini is so much better, but I will have them side by side. And what's very annoying about using the Google Home experience is when it doesn't understand what you're saying, it has to finish its thinking process before you can enter a new command. You can't stop it halfway through. Mm. You just have to let it slide. So it's, okay, Google, sorry if I set all yours off at home, <laughs> set timer for five minutes. And then you've lost 10 seconds in the thinking process before you can re-enter it. Yeah. And that's frustrating. Whereas I haven't had that with the Mini. And like like I said, literally side by side. So if you are thinking about getting both devices and you're really concerned about microphone sensitivity, you are soft-spoken, then the Echo range, I can wholeheartedly recommend. So I do have an Echo Dot at home. But I would say if you, like me, prefer Google Assistant as a fundamental voice assistant, opt for the mini if you're going to be listening to the audio on an external device, which will have to be a Chromecast yeah. audio, which will bring us on to our... Yeah, so, so I mean, do you want to talk speaker quality before we, we dive into That's a really the, good shout. Yeah. Good um, shout. So I think like the, the Amazon Echo was like widely criticized for having a speaker that was kind of okay, but kind of lacking in a little bit. Yeah, the base area. and the Echo Dot was literally oh, yeah. just it's, like a smartphone speaker. Yeah, it's, it's just awful. But I mean, um, so not something you want to like listen to music no. for, for, for like a long period of time. Um, but then with this, in this like generation device, they kind of oh, you've got like Dolby processing and stuff. But and specifically then, with a plus, I think uh, because yes. they have the Echo Plus now, which is a larger one. Mm. It's taken the plus to come out to actually rival Google because this is an area again. I think we both agree, just like we both agree that with the microphones, Amazon's like ahead of the like game here. But yeah. with the audio quality, the Google Home sounds great. The regular Google Home for its air freshness size and the Home Mini as well, like. Mm. Given the fact that it, don't get me wrong, sound isn't really good, but side by side with a, um, a Echo Dot, yeah. the Home Mini is louder, the Home Mini is clearer, and the Home Mini emulates bass even more, even though it's just emulating bass, because you, there is you put your hand under it, there is nothing happening. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it's uh, like the Home Mini and the Home range all the way for audio. I mean, like not to go back to the Sonos One, but I'm a massive Sonos One fanboy, and that just like makes them all sound mm. awful. Mm. Um, so all, all this kind of like plus versus 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 regular or like home versus mini i'm like to be honest they all sound bad yeah they <laughs> so, all so that's coming know. from an audiophile whereas yeah. i'm not like a massive audiophile i have my speaker at home my big setup and i have it hooked up to my chromecast audio so if i'm listening to something beyond like a news update or yeah. the weather then i'll push it to like okay google play on orbit sound one or whatever it is i'm listening to and it will do that because i have chromecast audio but you do need that external peripheral but yeah the base speaker quality if you just want to leave them i'd say the Google Home and the Echo Plus yeah. sit at the top of the pile, um, followed probably by the Echo, then the um, Google Home Mini, yeah. and then Alexa's Echo Dot, yeah. Amazon's Echo Dot, sorry, is at the bottom of the pile. Yeah, probably. But if you're not going to be listening to music and all you want is voice updates, set alarm, things like that, actually for really, really trebly things yeah. and things you just need clarity for like yeah. those, the Echo Dot's just fine. Yeah, oh God, yeah, exactly. I mean, for like, yeah, uh, like as you say, for anything that means you're not listening to it for an extended period, like I don't care if when it says, oh, the time is 10.43 yeah. a.m. Like, like I don't cares? need that to reverberate through my house. Exactly, no. and so, I mean, and then on the Summers One thing, because I've got, I've now got that as like a, a bedside speaker, so I'll kind of, I'll turn over in the middle of the night and wonder what the time is, and I'll go like, Alexa, what's the time? And it blares at me like, <laughs> it's 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't have drunk so much. <laughs> ah. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly the same. It's like uh, my housemate is asleep in the room next door, and I'll just be like, forget I have like the e Echo Dot connected to my speaker, and I'll just be like, Alexa. Set alarm for 5 a.m. Your alarm is going, oh, <laughs> so no, bad. you'll wake up, Charlotte. <laughs> um, and it does every single time. But yeah, so that actually brings us on to connectivity. Yep. Um, and that's something that's super important. But before I jump onto that, let's see, you've got quite a few comments in here. Awesome. Um, Mini is awesome. Uh, that's from Amo. Goyal. Thanks, Emma. I like the Google Home Mini from Matthew Lear. Um, Raymond, hi guys. Hi, Raymond Moore. William, can Alexa control the Fire TV yet? And can the Home Mini control Sonos? 
Oh, uh, how so, many yeah. cannot control Sonos, uh, but Alexa can. Um, but that said, the controlling Sonos functionality isn't amazing. Um, so from my experience, when you kind of set up the Sonos stuff, uh, Sonos by default names all your speakers based on the room they're in. So you have like bedroom speaker, like kitchen speaker, um, living room speaker. And then I'll kind of go like, oh, play Red Hot Chili Peppers on bedroom. And it just, just often just doesn't doesn't know what it's doing. It goes like, oh, I don't understand device bedroom. And you're like, but it's right there. I don't, I don't get what you need. So it is there. I wouldn't rely on it that much. And yes, Alexa can control Fire TVs for uh, your information, William. Thank you for that question. Would definitely buy a Google Home Mini when it's available in India. Um, that's from Kiruba. Uh, British Unknown, shame you have to buy a Chromecast to stream to a TV from a Google Home. Yes, it is. So we're going to come on to outputting options, whether it is TV or video. Neil H, Home Mini looks natural next to my iMac. It disappears, yet it adds elegance to my desk. <laughs> that's, that's If you ever want a writing job at TechRadar, I'm pretty sure um, like beautiful floral language like that is very welcome on the very team. Very poetic. Um, Tristan Chu, any good ideas on an unlocked Samsung Galaxy to say, wrong live <laughs> stream <laughs> um but there will be loads uh, techradar.com forward slash black friday i think if you're in the us there is 200 bucks off an unlocked samsung galaxy s8 on new egg so mm, check out techradar.com forward slash black friday good, good deals like. yeah good deals good deals um so the british unknown my google home mini gets strangely hot i noticed interesting oh, okay yeah Have i've never actually that? touched my google home mini except for so another area that I will so concede the Google Home Mini is inferior to the Echo Dot yep. is privacy mode. They do not want you to keep like turn that thing off because there's a like really, really firm toggle at the base of it. Yeah. So Alexa has, uh, Echo Dot, sorry, has an array of buttons at the top that are very easy to press. Mm. And what you get with that is a very on and off privacy mode. Whereas on the Echo Dot, sorry, on the Google Home Mini, um, because it's like quite light, you have to yep. physically pick it up and turn the toggle and then put it down every single time you want to go into privacy mode. So that's why I would potentially feel it to figure out it was getting hot, mm. but I never switch it on privacy mode, whereas I switch my Alexa Echo Dot on privacy mode. I mean, the, the, the privacy stuff is really interesting um, because these devices are listening to you all the time. Um, but they, they do have, they both have mute buttons and these mute buttons are hardware. So like, as soon as you press that mute button, it just turns off the microphone entirely and you it would be impossible to hack that using software because yeah. that's a hardware switch. I was talking to a security researcher about this that worked out a way of hacking one of the previous generations of Amazon Echo. So if you're going to buy an Amazon Echo, please don't buy one off eBay. Buy them from Amazon directly because it is possible to hack the previous oh, generation wow. okay. to like remotely listen Interesting. and stuff. Um, so you can buy them refurbished, but just make sure they come from Amazon. Um, but he, he made the really excellent point that he was like, yeah, they are listening to you, um, but at least they have these, these mute buttons. Yeah, yeah. Your phone, however... Your mm. phone can be hacked just as easily, well, no, sorry, not just as easily, but your phone is open to being hacked in the same way as an Amazon Echo. Okay. You have that thing with you all the time. There's no way to mute the microphone no, on, on no, your phone. No, it's always listening. Again, so if you're concerned things about, like Pixel Buds, yeah. same thing. So but, if you're concerned about privacy, um, I, I, my personal feeling is that phones are like way more scary like having yeah. way more scary like, privacy implications than than smart speakers really good point really yeah. really good point um okay so if i had a weird accent which one of these would do better oh uh i mean as someone with like the most british default yeah. accent i mean i'm sorry i haven't got to see pronunciation standard english right here um but i would definitely say that if my, as a an assistant Google's Assistant is better, but as a piece of hardware based on the better microphones, I would completely recommend the Echo Dot range. That's a fair point. The Echo range. Um, I was around a table with my parents yesterday um, setting up their Echo Dot, and they, my parents are Middle Eastern, and they have, like, they have accents and it was hilarious they were <laughs> fighting over it they were like play classic fm no play gold no play and it was getting every word they were saying i was super impressed so uh, the, i mean really the, like small anecdote but um so amazon echo obviously came out in the us way before the uk and a lot of us were sitting in the uk going like come on come on amazon let's, let's just bring it out be fine like, yeah. we all speak english it's the same language but in those intervening years um amazon was like recording like 
hundreds and hundreds of different people in the UK and transcribing them because in the UK there are so many different accents yeah. from like London to like West Country yeah, to yeah, Brummie. Yeah. And so, so it was like immigrant. Was a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so it was a really big job for Amazon to kind of to go around and record these accents. That's so really I, interesting. I, uh, I met someone that like was part of that process. She said like, yeah, you just go to a town, rock up, just like get dozens of people in and just have them like say things and then you have to teach Alexa how to listen to them and it worked clearly like I said my parents were like really impressed Um, and it worked so Raymond hopefully that answers your question largely based on how good the microphones are as well which is just better in the Amazon range Um, and if you're looking for a bigger one the Google Home really disappointed I really hope that the Home Max when it drops next year is going to have better microphones yeah I mean it just it's such a basic part of the equation yeah like why wouldn't you Get it right. Why wouldn't you? Um, Matthew Lear, I like your MacBook. Thank you, Matthew. This is a a skin from Bambooty, a Belgian company that makes awesome skins. Um, Neil H, thanks for that. Now I have a timer running. (laughs) You're welcome. Sorry, I'm I'm a bit behind on the comments, but uh, British Unknown is answering all of the ones that I'm not getting to in time. That's awesome, thank you. Um, Can Google Home read audiobooks like Alexa? No, it can't. And we'll, in fact, that probably brings us, let me flag where I've got to. And now we'll talk about the services. Yes, so uh, they both handle these a little bit differently. Um, Amazon has the Amazon Skills Store, which basically allows any developers to go in and build what are essentially apps for Alexa. And then you can then install those on your Echo device uh, or third-party device, presumably, um, by going into the Alexa app and enabling different skills and that sort of thing. That is really nice. It means that if you're like a random smart home company, uh, you don't have to wait for Amazon yeah. to like support your thing. You can go like, no, we're gonna build a thing and we're gonna like put it up on the store and then if people wanna use it, they can download it, which yeah. I think is super, super cool. Super cool. Google approached it slightly differently. They did an Apple kind of take, I guess, mm. because like Alexa's kind of more like Android, yeah. whereas in using a phone analogy, which is a much, much more open ecosystem, <coughs> whereas Google Home is much more like iOS, they're policing things a lot more aggressively. Yeah. And by policing, I just mean doing everything themselves. But given the resource of Google, that still means it's a competitive ecosystem. Yes for the useful things, which is why, back to your statement on the Sony mm. like research that found that Google could answer more useful questions, yeah. it can. So like yesterday, I, again, with my parents, uh, Alexa, what noise does a cat make? And um, I set the Echo Dot on a half hour meowing rant. It literally just kept meowing for half, an, until I unplugged it and plugged it in again. Then it was fine. And then we like, cause we, and it's really nice as well, cause you can install an app without having to go to your phone yeah so i can say what noise does a cat make and then alexa went if you want to install this yeah. uh, feature um say install feature whatever it is oh, and cool. it installed okay. all without me even looking at my phone which was great and i was like this is impressing my parents and then it went crazy which the cats loved you've like you touched upon an interesting thing which is that because developers are making their own skills for for echo like the quality of these things like varies yeah. massively yeah, yeah. so we're obviously based in london and travel and is something that's really important here because you cannot drive a car in central london um so there are like a bunch of different tube um apps like one of the early ones really popular and like is recommended a bunch of websites has just stopped working you know you you ask like oh uh you know is the jubilee line running today and it just goes like uh, and just kind of dies in front of you um because obviously this developer just like hasn't maintained this this skill so there are some really good skills out there there are some developers doing some really cool work there's a lot of stuff that's just bad yeah it's just not that good and it kind of, if you're a consumer and you kind of aren't really sure of like who's making what, then it kind of creates this really uneven impression of yeah. what the Echo is able to do. The Echo is also a little bit, dare I say it, dirtier. <laughs> <laughs> Hear me out. Because you've got Go the on. open developer like app ecosystem, yeah. open APIs. Like you can install Would You Rather on right, the Echo. Like the okay. games are actually like a little bit more risque, whereas Google's is like the most PG-13. So if you're at a party or something and you just want to like, I don't know, play um, Cards Against Humanity or something, yeah. there probably will be an Echo variant of those. Um, I'd say that the Google experience is more refined, but it right. isn't perfectly consistent either. Mm. For example, on Google Assistant, when you're using your like any Google phone, you can integrate to is tasks. So you can say um, add a uh, reminder to or add mm. to to do this list or whatever it is. Um, take note, I think that's the specific phrase. Whereas um, you can't do that on Google Home. Yeah. And I, you can do that on Alexa. 
Yeah, no, the, the, the Todoist stuff. So that's why I am a Todoist subscriber and stuff. I'm like fully in that ecosystem. Same. Um, but so I didn't realize that it was the take note thing because I was originally finding it really difficult because I'd have to say like add blah 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 yeah. to my to do list, and occasionally just like halfway through my sentence, it would kind of go, "Oh no, uh, yeah, no, I'm good. Like I've got everything." And you're like, "No, I haven't finished <laughs> what I'm saying." Um, so so the, the actual phrasing is take note. And yeah, then, yeah. Oh, okay. So if you look into that's it, a good tip. but the annoying thing is also as a uh, Google Home. Amazon, like, yeah, Alexa, everything user on various devices. It's different from your phone's Google Assistant app to that. Yeah. So I have to remember which device I'm talking to in order to enter my to do list tasks. So yeah. some consistency I've, I've there would have been really nice. Future. But if you do really like to do this, then the Echo Dot is the only one that's going to integrate. Yeah. The only way Google Assistant will is if you've got it on a phone that has the app installed. So in that respect, again, you've got more versatility in the Echo range. And I think that's pretty much where this is kind of rounding up yeah. in terms of the utility. Um, in terms of smart home as well, the you use this more than I do, and that's yeah. largely because I have a Google Home set up. But the Echo is widely seen as the superior smart home system. Uh, yeah, so so like partly as a result of this whole skills integration stuff, yeah. and then like with with recent updates, you can now set routines through Alexa. So you can kind of like group together commands to say, hey, like if I ask for this, then like turn off my lights and turn off my heating and like do a bunch of things at once. It's nowhere near perfect and I'm kind of I'm now in this like awful situation where I've got um, my Hue lights are connected to Alexa but they won't connect to HomeKit and then I've got a HomeKit light that is Alexa compatible and that won't co connect to Alexa you go into the Alexa app and like they're all just kind of like they're like the naming of all these devices is all just like oh it's like hallway one two three and I'm like are you lights are you speakers what like what is going I have on a headache just it's listening just to this. I'm trying like so I want I want the smart home I want it to work yeah I want to my my eventual aim is to be able to say to my speaker Alexa like Roomba party and then have the light kind of like flash different colors and have my Roomba go off and then like <laughs> have the speaker start blaring like a predefined play Roomba is a robotic vacuum cleaner just to clarify this is how John gets his kicks I love it. Um, and I, you know, we're not we're not there yet. Basically, we're not there. It's, we're not it's there. just everything's everything's kind of like doing things its own way, and it doesn't talk to each other. And I think the fact that I have like a separate Wi-Fi router kind of confuses the whole thing. So it's like, oh, you're connected to a different. A, yeah. It's just yeah. just janky. Just at the mess moment. At the moment, which is annoying. But it goes to show with both of these, we do have yeah. some way to go. So that now brings us on to outputting audio, right? And in this respect, again, neither is perfect. Um, weirdly, I'll jump in here with Google Home. Okay. Home Mini, so Home Regular, no Bluetooth. Yeah. Or if it does have it, it's completely 100% disabled. Right. Really, really weirdly, the Google Home Mini, mm. which we've established is a pretty terrible speaker, yeah. has Bluetooth, right. but not to output. Just as an input. Just as an input. So you can output from your phone to your Google Home Mini and get really mediocre audio. I but no 3.5mm headphone jack. So you can't output it. You need to buy a £30 Chromecast audio dongle in order to output yeah. your music. Which I was initially really excited about. So I, I have a Chromecast audio already. So granted, it's not like an additional cost for me. So I've got that and that's all connected up to my nice speaker and stuff. Um, because... It's, it's your, doing the it, whole. It's your buzz. Yeah. That's really annoying. Um, so, uh, so the Echo Dot, which I originally had, has has the head the, the output jack, and yeah. I had that like plugged into a set of speakers. But then I found I had to leave those speakers on permanently because yeah. there's no way of it going like, oh, I'll play music through those speakers, but if you ask me for something, I'll just play it myself. Yeah. yeah. So when Google Home was announced, I was like, oh, that's amazing. So I can still use it as a, as a normal device, but then when I want to just play music, then that can be to a set of speakers. Yeah. But the functionality is so complicated. You have to go, oh, stream Spotify to speakers. Yeah. And then yeah. if you ask for the next song, then it just immediately goes back to playing on the device itself. And you're like, yeah. no, just like if it's already playing on the speakers, just continue keep, to play keep it. doing yeah. it. Like, and so it's got some really beautiful elements that just make me really happy, like grouping speakers to create yeah. a home group, or you can set multiple groups. So you, and it's really good at getting it right. So you'll just be, especially on the mini again, yeah. you'll just be like, okay, Google, play like I don't know Britney Spears baby one more time to kitchen home group and it will tear the house yeah. down and you've got a party right there um, but it won't for example play the next song on that speaker array it yeah. will play it on the single device and it's that's annoying but it's better 
than the echo dot in terms of outputting to a community of speakers yeah so the, so the echo dot it does have multi-room functionality yeah. but the multi-room only works with other echo speakers so if you've got like an alexa equipped third party speaker then that can't be grouped together into those same speakers you can attach it to a bluetooth speaker but then you can't kind of like sync it like yeah. at the same time you have to kind of connect it and then play and then it plays everything and then disconnects it and then it plays everything on the speaker itself it's all just a little bit janky yeah it, it's not contextual yeah. like at a certain point you just want to shake it and go like no when i'm playing music i'll put the step speaker if i'm doing commands yeah do it and then it Neither of them are perfect. Neither of them are perfect. Yeah. So on the one hand, you've got loads of Chromecast Audio is a wonderful solution. But what's annoying is, for example, also even really practical things. Every Chromecast Audio that you have needs to have a micro USB power. It takes up a power slot. Mm. It has to have its own independent power. Not all speakers have USB outs and some of yeah. them aren't even powerful enough to power Chromecast Audio. So neither of these devices, when it comes to outputting a perfect but I will say the versatility and the cost effectiveness of having a 3.5 mil headphone jack out on the Alexas makes, if you don't have a Chromecast audio already, the Alexa range a better solution. Yes. Because you can also output Bluetooth, which is really handy. The Bluetooth is really handy. You can like even activate that with your voice. You can just yeah. say, hey, connect a Bluetooth speaker, yeah. and then it just does. And it just does. Like... It's like a one-time setup on the Alexa yeah. app, and pow, you are done. Right, Echo Show. Uh, yeah, Echo Show. Um, I've got one. Uh, they've they've just been released in the UK. I've got it sitting on my uh, on my desk. We have a review up on the site already because my American colleague Nick Pino has taken a look at it. He quite liked it, but um, the utility of its screen isn't quite established. You know, in part because Amazon relies so much on the developers of its skills, and so many of them haven't built in integration for that screen just yet. Okay. Um, my personal opinion on it, I hate it. I hate it so much. Wow. I think... That's not even, like, on the fence. Yeah, that this... So, the thing I like about the Echo is that... And I feel that... I'm increasingly feeling this about all technology. I don't want technology to, to demand attention from me. I want my phone to be there when I need it and to speak to me in, like, very specific circumstances. But otherwise, I just want it to wait and, like, not pester me with unnecessary notifications. The Amazon Echo Show seems to have been entirely designed to be constantly throwing information at you. By default, it's sh throwing, like, headlines at you. So I'm sitting there, like, I've got it, as I said, on my desk. I'm sitting there trying to work, and it's going, like, ah, oh, headline about Brexit. Ah, oh, Charles Manson is dead. Ah, oh, like, news story, news story. And I'm just, it's just distracting and awful. And then you can go to it, like, oh, turn off screen. And then it does. And then you find out the next day, it's kind of gone, hey, the screen's back, guys. <laughs> and I, I just don't like it. I, like Google is back, um, so like uh, originally it was it was pulled off the show because uh, Google. Yeah, I did say I did say YouTube, right? I didn't say anyway. you said Google, but I, I said, whoops, YouTube is back. YouTube, I mean. Uh, so originally uh, YouTube was pulled because Google said it was providing it wasn't providing the full YouTube experience. It's now back. Um, so that potentially makes it more handy, you know, if you're like, like in the morning, I'm eating cereal, my hands are full, just being able to go like play the latest video from Linus Tech Tips, uh, like play the latest Tech Radar podcast with me in it, starring oh, sorry. me, search John Porter <laughs> in search Google, search John Porter Tech Radar <laughs> and start playing, uh, it's just me in the morning, just <laughs> staring at myself. Yeah, um, I can see it. So that, that sort of stuff I can see being handy. I just, I just don't like it's mo which seems to be like get a person's attention okay that's um, interesting and that, that's a personal opinion really interesting okay mehe jane says can you play songs saved on your phone on the google home so when you're playing and th this comes back to the audiobooks thing um, uh, someone asked earlier can you play audible books on uh Google Home. No, you can't. But what you can do, which is really handy with all Google Home devices, is cast the audio from your phone. And that means you can turn the phone screen off and it will just cast over Wi-Fi the audio from your phone. That's so cool. can you play songs saved on your phone on the Google Home? Yes, you can. If you upload your own song library into Google Play Music, can you then... I don't know that. I don't know if yeah. it'll integrate that tightly with Google Play Music. I'd imagine if anything would, it is that. Yeah. But I don't know if there is a similar casting system on Alexa. I haven't come across it using the app no, just cast I all haven't. audio output from your phone so that's yeah, one so. really nice thing and I use that because I have an issue where I got audible about seven years ago when I was in the States so my audible subscription is American and my Google homes uh, yeah. sorry my Alexa like setup thinks is trying to access my UK account right. and I can't transfer it so I can't categorically listen. That's such a tech journalist problem. It's <laughs> so obscure, but it's it's real. It's my problem. Yeah. And so I actually end up defaulting to my Google Home whenever I want to listen to audiobooks, which is pretty much a daily occurrence for me. Um, 
Right, so um, we've got some more questions. Trying to get... Uh, oh, it just jumped, sorry. There was someone who was asking about Cortana. Um, ooh. Ooh, trying yeah. to get Cortana to recognize me as a nightmare. Matthew Lear, thanks I, for that. Uh, so I haven't, because uh, it was Harman Kardon's in, Invoke, Evoke speaker, uh, which has Cortana built in. I think that's the only Cortana speaker on the market. Um, I haven't used Cortana in a long time. I've no. got a Windows 10 PC, and every time um, it gets my voice, I just close, close. Yeah. It was an accident. It's, uh, uh, yeah. you know, that noise. That's how I feel about Cortana. Yeah, I, I think voice assistants make so much sense on on a phone or with like a speaker, where it's um, often quicker just to like ask something rather than to type it out with your with your hands. Um, on a PC, I don't think it's ever going to be more efficient to use your voice than just to like press that Windows key and type in your query. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I haven't used Cortana that much, but that, that's probably on me. I should probably yeah. get acquainted. Yeah. Well, you've got Siri integration with MacBooks now, so mm. I think they need Cortana needs to be there. But uh, yeah, it's just it's just it's not there. As in the, yeah. So Colin Pamplin says, I have the Echo Show. I didn't realize it doesn't work for transport updates. Bruh. I'm really hoping that someone builds a nice like. It feels like the kind of it basically it feels like an early app store. Like when you went on the uh, the original iPhones and stuff, the app store was just filled with crap. It was awful. And then you had people making good apps. You had you know like City Mapper and Uber and all of these like amazing apps that we take for granted today. But those early years were rough, and I feel like we're in that rough period for. Um, for the skills store as well. The revenue model on skills though is really weird. All of them are free. Uh, and I think originally developers weren't getting paid for them. They were just kind of used to like promote services elsewhere. So if you like have a recipe website, then you could build a recipe skill and like hope that people would then use a website more as a result. But I think now Amazon has some sort of revenue sharing model where like if you're in the top 100 skills, you may be, okay. I don't know. My feeling is that you, the developers should be able to charge for their skills. And I think, because you know, if I could pay for like, if I could pay five pounds for a good recipe skill on the like, Amazon Echo, I would so pay five yeah. Like that feels like a really obvious thing. I don't think anyone's done it because making money from those that sort of development yeah. resource is it's a difficult thing to develop there's yeah. a lot of work that needs to be done and you can't waste like, money google's already got a lot of that lined up in the sense that google's reading of the like website results is very smart so if you ask it okay google how do you make bliss balls for yeah. example it will then read the top kind of snippet the rich snippet that is on the google search result uh, and it will tell you one cup of cashew nuts one cup of dates and i get a lot of like really quick fire recipe ideas yeah. by just Okay, Googling. I'm setting them off on purpose now. <laughs> Sorry, I, um, guys. I actually, I recently watched a man cook an entire omelette uh, using just a Google Home. Yeah. Um, I won't give any more details than that, but um, yeah, it worked really well. It, it works. So even though you haven't got the skills, based on the versatility of Google as a whole, yeah. you've got the skills as it were. Um, so one of my favorite features on the Google Home is voice recognition between all my family members for my calendars. And the broadcast feature is the best for trolling the downstairs Google Home. Nice. Little wonder that is from the uh, original troll himself, the British unknown. Uh, then I think uh, the uh, Echo has the similar functionality yeah. with the intercom stuff. And you can actually like call other like other the, echoes yeah. under your hub accounts. So again, I was like, oh, mom, oh God, I don't want to say this. Oh no, oh, you can call my Echo. And she was just <laughs> so excited about that idea um but yeah so th yeah. this is on both but this is a new feature introduced in the last few weeks to the yeah I, it, was, it was funny so uh, gerald lynch was reviewing the amazon echo plus for us and i was kind of sitting there on a sunday morning uh eating some toast and eggs and just my <laughs> my thing lights up going like uh gerald lynch is trying to drop in on you and i was like i he hello and then i just had a little chat with gerald while <laughs> sitting in my bedroom it was so weird. creepy um so devendra furke hello uh, can I mobile call to someone on Alexa or Google Home? Oh, uh, in the States, you can with Alexa. I don't know about Google mm, Home. No. I, I, oh, I think you uh, you either can or you will be able to. Right. But it's in, not here yet. In the UK, I think because our tariffs work differently. I mean, it, it was the same with um, Google Voice back in the day. Because I think in the US, there's like a certain amount of you pay to receive calls. And so they're able to offer free calls because... yeah. Either way, uh, so I'm not sure how it works internationally. I know the US seems to be slightly further ahead than everyone else. Um, it's all a bit all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Um, but watch this space on that one and don't get any of them if that's one of your key things that you yeah. want to do. Any hopes for the Apple HomePod? Well, 
so recently on, on, on one of these live shows, um, we kind of talked about how Apple had seemed to be really quiet on the HomePod. It was announced back in June. Uh, then uh, when the uh, iPhone 8 was announced, they just like barely mentioned the HomePod at all. Like, if they did, I don't remember what they said. It was originally supposed to come out in December. It's now been pushed to next year. Um, difficult to know on that one. I think when it comes to Siri, it's a little bit behind the competition. Um, I, I rechecked my my Siri busting question, which is when was the Mona Lisa painted? Because the first time I asked that, it told me that it was painted in 1703, which is not quite the form I wanted that answer read out in. And now when I ask it, it goes, here's some information related to that query, and it shows it up on the screen, uh, which kind of feels like it's, it's more correct because it was showing correct information, but, but it's a step backwards yeah it's forcing you to engage with your screen when the whole point of it is that you're able to have a screen free experience yeah so uh i think there are some big enhancements for siri planned is my personal intuition on that but the reality um, is when you're looking at what this show is about which is really really great value for money options for integrating smart homes into your world uh, that it will never be HomePod. It's not what Apple is going for when it does come out. But that said, I think HomeKit is, um, has way more potential than um, than the Alexa like smart home stuff. Uh, like Apple is doing the thing that Apple does, which is to control yeah. stuff more. Yeah. But I think the result so far is is something that feels a lot more cohesive. Um, that said, it's no one. It's not perfect. Yeah, at all. I mean, I'd it's not it. out. Uh, oh no, so, no, that, that, as in, I'm talking specifically about the home. Oh, pod. sure, but sure. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the like home kit with iPhone integration. Chances are, if you're watching this, most people will have an iPhone in their pocket. Yeah, um, yeah. But the home, the home pod delayed until 2018. Yeah, and I still haven't confirmed whether it's going to support anything other than AirPlay. I don't believe. And if ah, oh, like. The thought of buying a speaker for my home that I can only stream to from Apple devices yeah. is not something that builds that builds me, no. but, uh, fills me with a great deal of anticipation. But I think there's a lot of stuff they have not yet decided about that product yet, and uh, so hopefully, I just just have it support Bluetooth, yeah. please. Yeah. Um, so I think we've come to the conclusion that at least right now, yep. Google Home is better for some things. Yep. Specifically, audio quality at the various price points. Yep. And web search results. Yeah, yeah, like general kind of searching of the web and stuff, I think. Yeah. And I so someone who just wants a more general experience would probably, it'd be easier to recommend the Google Home, the Mini. Google Home Mini yeah, out of all of them. But Alexa and Echo Dot and Echo range. Yeah, I think, I think at the moment their strengths are the smart home stuff. Yeah. Um, I think that they're better hardware. So I think that as the kind of, Amazon is continually pushing out software updates and stuff. So I think there's like Google is fundamentally never going to be able to patch in a third microphone <laughs> to the Google Home. Uh, but like for Amazon, because they've got like a solid foundation of hardware there, I think the software has more potential going forward. Um, but I don't think it's quite there yet because Google has Google. And I, th I think um, doesn't Alexa it draws from Bing search results, I believe. Um, so so yeah, I'd, I'd say that right now. So I think yeah, smart home, Alexa, uh, Amazon slightly ahead. Yeah. General queries, Google Home slightly ahead. And then when it comes to media, they both have different very, strengths and weaknesses. Yeah, very similar. So Google Home for audio quality, both have really tight Spotify integration as well. Yeah. When it comes to outputting, if you don't want to purchase an additional dongle, go for an Echo Dot. Just be mindful of lowering your speakers when you finish listening to music yeah. so that it doesn't blare your alarm at you in the morning. Um, but I think generally at 34 pounds, Either of these smaller devices are an absolute steal. Yeah, yeah. No, they, it feels like a kind of a good thing just to kind of just to dip your toe in the water. Yeah, and just, just try it out. Exactly. You know? So over the next few days, Black Friday through Cyber Monday, uh, you can get either of these devices on special, thirty-four pounds. Yep. Techradar.com forward slash Black Friday, or indeed forward slash Cyber Monday. If you're watching this after the beat, you'll be able to see like all of the latest discounts across a whole range of products, not just these. Um, but thank you guys. You've been super, super helpful in the comments section, firing in your questions and the British Unknown answering a lot of them. Thanks, dude. Um, really appreciate it. If you've got any questions we couldn't get to or we missed, sorry about that. Fire them into the comments section and either ourselves or the British Unknown will do our best to answer. Um, we've been Tech Radar. Head over to the website for the latest Black Friday deals. Thanks for watching. Thanks so much, Bye. guys.